In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's word is from Hebrews 9, beginning with verse 11. When Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, Then, through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Therefore, he's the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will takes effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of goats and calves with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. And in the same way, he sprinkled with blood both the tent and all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends in Christ, instant replay is something that most sports fans cannot live without. We so often want to see it again because sometimes it's because there's controversy. Were they inbounds? Were they out of bounds? Was it a clean catch? Did the ball touch the ground? Was it not a clean catch? Who won the race? Who hit the finish line first? But sometimes you just want to see something again. Highlight reel. You just want to see what would make it onto Sports Center, because all the other mundane stuff, no, you want to see that ridiculous dunk. You want to see that goal that was the bicycle kick that was just hard to believe that a human body can even do that. It was 55 years ago today, November 7th, 1963, that instant replay was introduced into sports culture. So CBS Sports was broadcasting the Army-Navy football game, and for the first time, they showed the play again. And they did instant replay, and since that time, we love it. We need it. We want it. Because you want to see what happened. Maybe you missed it. And now with DVRs, you can do your own instant replay. I can set it to 1 15th speed, and it takes a minute to do four seconds worth of play so I can be the judge, right? It's only more recently that sports commissioners and officials have decided that instant replay should be used maybe to even impact the calls and the plays, to getting things correct, to overturning, affirming the calls of the officials. After further review, the call on the field stands. Everybody waits to hear what what they're going to say. There's some question whether human error, what is seen with the eye in the moment by the officials, people who are trained to know exactly what to look for, whether that still has any place in sports. That sometimes if it's wrong, we just deal with it. So many people demand perfection in the call of officiating. One call, that's all. No, wait, that's something different. No, but it is interesting in all of this that when you look at a singular play, it's something that only happens once. You can look at it a hundred times, but it only happened. No matter how many times you watch it, how, what angle you see it from, you can't change what actually 
happened. Your perspective may change. What, what happened is what happened. And that's where we intersect our text, at least in my head. Something that happened only one time, a singular event in all of history, but how we see it again and again versus something that used to happen all the time, so much so that maybe you would not even take notice. So it's about the sacrifices that God demanded in his law in the sacrificial system of the Old Testament. So if you look at Hebrews in general in this section of Hebrews, it talks about the Old Testament sacrifices. And if you read enough and you dig in enough, the details of what God's people were called to do in the Old Testament, it's pretty graphic. Usually, it's only horror movies or maybe hospital emergency rooms where you would encounter blood in the way that it's spoken of in this text and in the Old Testament sacrifices. Did you hear the description in there? Sprinkling of blood all over everyone and all over everything. If I tried to reenact that here, up and down the pews, somebody would certainly get it on their phone, post it to YouTube, and it would be, goodbye, Pastor Smith. <laughs> You're done. It would look like a crime scene with blood everywhere. Truth be told, this place is a crime scene. Multiple, multiple, multiple crimes have been committed by every one of us. We've lied and cheated and been selfish and unkind and greedy. And the list would go on and on and on. And you try to look presentable. We try to look, I even put on a white robe. But we're not fooling God or each other. We've got blood on our hands, if we tell the truth. And it's hideous, even when we want to try to hide the evil and the ugliness that's inside of us and in our hearts. God calls it out. And that's, I think, tied to the Old Testament sacrifices. Some people have wondered, why would God have the people of the Old Testament actually kill animals? Literal blood sprinkled over everyone. It seems so non-PC. But in the literal sacrificing of animals in the Old Testament, God said, you need to realize that sin, death, is connected to sin. You need to have this so much in your hearts and in your minds that I'm going to show you in a very physical, demonstrative way that sin causes death. The effect of all of our living and all our sins in this world, we've made a bloody mess out of everything, haven't we? Can you picture that scene? Literally, Moses throwing blood on everyone. Would you want to watch the instant replay? Or would you want to see the instant replay of all the sins that made that necessary? Both the crimes and the payment for the crime, pretty graphic, to say the least. So God invites us to a different picture, to witness something that took place only one time in the history of the entire world. All of the sacrifices for all the centuries that had preceded it now became a one-time event. Jesus is sacrificed. There was real blood, real pain, real suffering. We weren't there. No video. Would you want to see it? Do you need to see it? We've got a depiction of it. What's well, not quite so graphic as some paintings you see, 
but it's there for us to see. The end of all sacrifices, the payment for sin, is the blood of Jesus that once for all time took care of every sin that's ever been committed. Do you need to be reminded of that? We just sang it, didn't we? Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Come to the altar. Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. It doesn't happen without pain, without blood, without suffering. We care about so many things in life. We care about sports, don't we? We want them to get the call right. Maybe we want perfection in officiating that always gets the call right. Sometimes we suffer with the injustices. But how about getting the call right when it comes to our lives together and how we treat each other? What do you want the instant replay of? All of your sins? Or as you've come here today, realized there's forgiveness for you. We don't get the perfection part right. Jesus did. And he alone was on the cross. And so when we look, we see that God's judgment was on him. And we can rest secure in what he did. After further review, our guilt has been paid for. Our sentence of death is overturned. We're forgiven in Jesus. That's a W. In Jesus' name, amen.